Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast Injury Edition. I'm Rich Dotson. He's Matt O'Hara. Hey, hey. hey it's going week good six. over here, man. We don't have a lot of injuries, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Week six injury show. Um, yeah, this week, no QBs went down, amazingly, surprisingly, somehow. Um, well, and, I mean, some know. people went down in the rankings, like guys like Anthony Richardson, still sitting behind amazing Joe Flacco, Gardner Minstrel still bench, and Deshaun Watson continues to look like the worst quarterback uh, in the NFL week in and week out in destroying my life. Thank God I had the Cleveland uh, baseball team to, to cheer me up. Otherwise, I'd be in complete despair with Ohio State Buckeyes losing on Saturday and uh, the Browns doing what they do and just lose on Sunday. That Buckeyes game was was really good. I feel like, um, I mean, as a Buckeyes fan, of course I feel like we were the better team and we kind of shot ourselves in the foot, but props to Oregon. They they, they defed, defeated or defended their home turf there and uh, did what needed to be done to win that game. Um, so yeah, it got, it was a, it's, it's a it was a good game. Well, you know, obviously not a lot of points in Oregon. Hopefully, you know, now now with the twelve team playoff field too. It's not even something like oh, we're not going to make the playoffs. It's like you don't even worry about it. You really don't. I mean, I feel like that's if you're going to have a hiccup as, as a top two or three team, you want it to be against another top two or three team, and kind of yes. early in the season, so you can kind of let that fuel your fire for the rest of the season and kind of learn from it. So. I mean, hopefully they just bounce back and, and kind of take that as a learning tool. We'll see. 20 million doesn't get you what it used to back in the day. College football, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, but we're not a college show. We're a dynasty show today talking injuries. And, you know, outside, you know, for mostly it, there's a real redundant theme here uh, for today's show, Matt. It's just hamstrings and concussions. Sounds like a nice restaurant. Does it? Does it sound like a good restaurant? I don't think I want to eat at <laughs> hamstrings and concussions personally, but uh, what Hammy, Hammy, teaches hammies us. and cusses. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so we'll start it off here with the running backs. Um, we'll start here in hometown uh, Cleveland Browns. Uh, Jerome Ford hurt his hamstring um, this past week, and uh, not a big time loss. Obviously, um, Chubb is scheduled to come back next week, which is I think the big news there. Um, if Chubb isn't able to take on the full load, which I wouldn't expect him to right off the rip. It's going to be a combination of Pierre Strong and Deontay Foreman kind of backing him up. Last week, um, Foreman uh, uh, had 10 carries and Strong had eight, uh, but Strong, you know, had 43 yards compared to 31 for Foreman. So I think Strong has a little bit more juice, but it obviously is a smaller, uh, smaller back. So it's going to be situational who who's working behind, uh, uh, Chubb this next week, and I, and I think with Pierre Strong's uh, pass catching ability, I think Pierre Pierre Strong is the, the running back. If you need a flex spot, you're banged up by injury this week, and you want to get a running back in there. Pierre Strong sin, looks significantly better than Deontay Foreman uh, this week. And you're right, Jerome Nick Chubb will kind of be eased back in. So I fully expect Pierre Strong to be back in on passing downs. So we want to see if somehow if Naheem Hines gets activated somehow, some way, because that would kind of uh, really, in a pure strong, they probably use Naheem Hines on passing down, so they're going to ease him back in. But if not, he he's the way to go because they probably won't ramp Nick Chubb up here for about two to three games before he gets the full load out there. Uh, and I mean, they obviously can't throw the football, so I expect Nick Chubb to get a ton of carries uh, going forward afterwards and really help people propel them to a championship, which Cleveland Browns have absolutely no chance whatsoever Uh to, to even win i don't even know if all 30 other one team planes went down in the ocean and then import 31 college teams that the cleveland browns could still possibly win i, I don't even know if that's even possible because you have a quarterback that can't read uh anything on a defense whatsoever i don't know if he watches any film at all outside of like maybe some indie films maybe a good drama maybe some you know good massage techniques i don't know but it's sure not uh nfl films so yeah pierre strong uh, Jerome Ford out and let everybody know the hamstring strain for running backs. It's about two to three weeks. You usually miss about two weeks with the hamstring strain. So as we get redundant in here in the hamstring strains, just know it's about a two week window, uh, usually at minimum. Two, yeah. Two week minimum. Absolutely. So the, we'll move on to the next hamstring. Um, I mean, running back, uh, <laughs> Travis Etienne's got a hamstring as well. Obviously tanks Bigsby is the, the, um, 
direct backup there. Dernis Johnson will will see some work as well going forward. And, and you know, another week of kind of losing football there for Jacksonville. So there weren't a lot of rush attempts. Um, but Bigsby got seven compared to ETN's three before he went down, and Dernis Johnson got six. So um I don't know, weird weird week. Obviously they were trailing in that game, so there wasn't a lot in the rushing game. I would expect Tank Bigsby to kind of be the first guy up, but um we'll see. Yeah, you'll you'll get Tank Bigsby the first down up. You, you saw a lot of the uh, Dernish Johnson uh in there just because they were trailing. Look for Jacksonville to continue trailing those games. So Dernish Johnson and again, a, not another bad flex play here. He'll come in on passing downs. And remember, if, if it comes down to a running back, if you get somebody come in there and get seven to eight touches, and most of those are going to be in a passing game, that's a, definitely a, a flexible start in your starting lineup. That's where Deion, Dernis Johnson's going to come in. Tank Bigsby won't be really viable on those third downs, on those passing downs. And Dernis Johnson, go, almost at the end of that game, they got obviously when they're get, getting worked, it's getting most all the carries. So Dernis Johnson might be another flexible play here. Big, big, Tank Bigsby, if you're looking to sell Tank Bigsby at any time, these next couple of w- weeks are going to be a really good window. And these are where like a lot of windows start opening up when it comes to buys and sells. It could be whether, you know, the bye weeks, injuries, uh, teams just can't overcome. Teams are starting to really kind of, we, we're kind of now see the foundation of teams that are not going to make the playoffs in your leagues. Teams that are going to be one in five in your leagues going to have a, a long stretch. No matter how good they might look on paper, it still might. You these are the windows that are going to open up, saying, "Hey, time for me to go ahead and uh, reverse course here and try me to grab a couple more draft capital, a little bit more draft capital. Try to lose a little bit more games uh, fairly and not tank wise by unloading some of this talent off your roster. That's a good way to lower your record because once you're down one in five, like I have a couple teams and like that, Matt, where like I went that le- the year like just completely ready to contend. Like I, I don't have my first round picks in those leagues. And without my first round pick, that's one thing I'm going to continue to try to still win if I can't get my first back. But I, the ones where I do have my first round pick, I'm trying to unload like any guys that don't have long-term future for me right now um, outside of a two-year window. Unless I can think that team can come back next year and completely rebound. I'm just trying to get my draft pick now as high as possible. We're going to look at another high-end draft class. Just like we were talking about for a while now, these running backs. So I'm just really trying to bump my bump my draft capital in some of these leagues as it is. And you're going to find a lot of teams out there right now, whether those middle row of the teams that kind of fell out of it. And, and even reverse course where some teams that thought they weren't in it, going to be in it. You know, because your team looks so good on paper or whatnot and injuries. They had Jordan Mason have propelled them to the top. Also open those opening those windows for guys that could possibly offer them win now, win now contention. The rule of thumb there uh, or advice that I would always give is always try to go out a year for those teams that are kind of middle in that are just kind of fell into their good fortunes by injuries and certain players kind of just have an outlier years. Like I like to skip ahead there. So I'd be looking at 26, 27 first round draft picks from then compared to 2025, usually a little bit easier to get because they're two years out and gives you a much higher chance to get a higher draft pick in the future. So these windows are going to be open up for the next probably three to four weeks here. Uh, probably a real, like the best bang for your buck uh, return because what you don't want to also do is even though the team says I'm not ready to sell now or I'm not ready to buy now, you just want to be first to action, right? Like first to act. Like you want to get those trades in there first. You don't want to see a trade go through. I'm like, oh, they gave you more for that player. Like, oh, I didn't know he was available just for a third round pick. Uh, I saw in a one QB league, I know it's only one QB league, but Daniel Jones went for a fourth round pick in one of our leagues. And it's kind of like, yeah, okay. I mean, it's literally, he's pretty almost practically free there. And if you need some kind of quarterback play at all, like you just missed out on a free backup quarterback who is putting up uh, outside of three weeks, almost quarterback one number. So be, just being proactive this time of year, and just throwing stuff out there, letting t- other teams know you're interested, trying to get deals done, um, tentative deals as well. Just be the first first to act. That way you don't get passed up when it's time to really get those trades in there because it's going to get real expensive as you get closer to the trade deadline. Well, I mean, you know, you you talked about Daniel Jones going for a fourth in one of our leagues. That was the guy I was playing this week, and he asked me how much it would cost for Joe Flacco off of my team because he's got Anthony Richardson, and we were playing each other, and I wanted to win. So I told him a fourth-round draft <laughs> just for Joe Flacco for one week. So then he went on uh, and traded for Daniel Jones. And you know, next week, 
the answer would be completely different. Or if I wasn't playing him or paying playing him that week, it would have been completely different. I would have said say any any draft pick. Give me a sixth round pick. Yeah. I don't I don't care for, for Joe Flacco. Just, just bring me a bag of almonds the yeah. next uh rookie draft. That's all you have to do. Like But that's a, but that's how fluid <laughs> these things can be. If if somebody you're playing, you're trying to get a quarterback off of them and they want to win, like it, the price is going up. It, like all that kind of goofy stuff will drive prices and and kind of move markets. So just pay attention. And and another thing that I did, you know, was I started listing all the players in case I did lose because that same league, I'm I'm one and four. If I win, I'm probably back in it because there's so much uh, parody in that league. Yep. But if I lose, I'm out. You know what I mean? So I started listing guys a few weeks ago, and then I've been updating the prices on them every week in my in my <laughs> in my trade bait. And I'm like, this one's going up. This one keeps going up. Terry keeps going yeah. up. Terry McLaurin. So you know what I mean? Like, um, it's a way to kind of give everyone in your league the pulse of kind of how you're feeling. Um, and, um, you know, I had some people reach out for Terry McLaurin and I was like, you know what, I, I'm not going to move him this week. I was like, the price is going up. So if you're still <laughs> interested and I lose this week, you know, it's probably going to be this, this, and this is what I'm yeah. going to need for him. So just, just some stuff to kind of, some tips, and I guess. On, on yeah. And it's to, good for you to case. update it like that too. And you can do the same thing on sleeper. So that's a good way to do it on MFL. You have to upload your trade bait that way. On Sleeper, you can go in and give players, anybody that doesn't know this, you can give players nicknames on Sleeper. When you change your nickname, it updates down in the bottom in the message chat. So it's really good for players that you have that you want to trade. You change your nickname to take any third, take any second and third, take a first, you know, any first. And you put those in their nicknames. And that kind of leads to like sets to market for players and lets people know what you're looking for. And sometimes that's e easier as well. I know a lot of players that do that and they use a nickname. Uh, tactic on there they'll put in a group chat they'll just put a, they'll same thing they'll have a list of players that they copy and save in their notes and put what they want next to them and they just repost it every week kind of like expedites uh trades as well because the people know exactly what you're looking for and they can send that offer on and it just smash accepts as well so another good tip tip to kind of like when you're looking to sell to saying hey guys anybody need a running back you just go through and expedite all those players names and what you're looking for in return to hope get some kind of like a little fishing bait out there right a little looking for some little fishies come out there give you a little bite that's what a you're night, looking for put so a little night a crawler on put a night crawler on that hook and send it on out to the rest of the league See yeah who bites. or any other x-men that you're trying to get rid of and off so good luck to you all right let's move on to the next hamstring um tajay spears went down with the hamstring obviously tony pollard's the most direct um guy that's going to benefit there julius chestnut is a guy that's behind him and saw one attempt uh, um this past week but it's going to be um pollard that gets the most he had 17 carries this past week for 93 yards and a touchdown and some um three catches for minus five yards in the passing game but you know it is what it is that's tennessee's offense right now they're kind of struggling 100%. through there a bit um so Has i don't know been, if there will be a him yeah. going forward I, I mean yeah trust us not good enough to really kind of get you excited there and already a bad football team that's not offering a lot of options it's going to be the tony Pollard show he's the best fantasy asset on that team right now uh completely you know i mean i guess the money was there so it shouldn't have been a huge surprise when they signed him i really did think tajay spears was gonna take over that backfield and be the main guy missed on hasn't, that one hasn't shown much definitely. yeah he hasn't shown no. much this year um, so not much to see there. It's, it's mostly, it's, it's actually just going to clear things up. I think for Tony Pollard and kind of boost his stock quite a bit here going forward for the next few weeks. Um, and let's, I guess, move on to the wide receivers. Um, well, what about, uh, what about, uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan, uh, I guess he'll be fine. Right. Jordan Mason's AC sprain. I forgot about him because it was Thursday night last week. Yeah. He had the AC yeah. sprain. He, he was able to come back for like a play, but then he missed some time. Um, or he missed the rest of the game. I think he came in for one carry or something, did he? Um, yeah. after the injury, and then he went he, right back he was, out. Have you heard anything new on him? Just said there's a good chance for him to play this week. That's why I kind of thought we kind of skipped it too. But if not, it was I, Isaiah, uh, Isaac Garendo, uh, was a direct backup to speech or the guy who tore up the car combine that doesn't have a lot of wiggle or anything along those lines. But hey, any running back in that situation is going to be a nice, but it looks like Mason is going to be back for week seven. Yeah, and um, what's his name? Um, Elijah Mitchell, I think, should be eligible pretty soon to come off IR. Maybe not this week, but maybe week eight. I, I don't know when. Yeah, they it looks like we're still about three weeks away from Christian McCaffrey. Okay, I'm not sure when they actually placed him on IR. I don't have that as a note. So, um, but he's been on IR basically all year. So, um, 
we may see him return as well. Now, can we move on to uh, uh, Marvin Harrison? Do whatever you want, baby. Come on. Nice. All right. So, uh, you know, obviously I kind of stated, but Marvin Harrison Jr. went down with a con- con- uh, concussion. Sorry, I can't speak today. Um, I would expect uh, Zay Jones and, and kind of a combination of him and maybe some Xavier Weave, uh, Weaver to get a little bit more work there in his absence. And obviously, um, Michael Wilson is the guy that's going to see an uptick, in, in my opinion, in in targets and all that kind of stuff. He had two targets for 21 yards and a touchdown. We'll probably see a little bit more Trey McBride in there as well and some Greg Dortch. Yeah, I look for Michael Wilson to take the biggest bump here as, you know, kind of slide into the X role. He's, has has already had a couple of nice games uh, over double digits for him to kind of slide in that number one uh, role. It would be kind of nice for him to see him as kind of alpha. I, I do agree with you. I think Trey McBride will probably be the, the first look, but I think receiver-wise, even over Greg Dortch, I think Michael Wilson's kind of the play here. Uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I am correct. He has not had over to – oh, it's standard. I knew he had over that. Every time on Fantasy Pros, why they don't default to standard – uh to uh ppr always blows my mind michael wilson currently i swear he had multiple games yeah he's had oh last week was his first game over 12 points no and then two weeks ago he had 14 points so definitely target in this offense for a team that's thrown the football a ton kyler murray is looking better uh a little bit better every single week so i look for michael wilson be the number one play zay flat zay jones we know i mean him called that suspension he hasn't really done anything whatsoever it's been kind of like greg dorch and michael wilson now, with Trey McBride sliding the number one role, it looks I do expect um, as a nice kind of like flex play, Michael Wilson to come in there and give you double digit points this week. You know, I, I think Wilson's the play for sure. I, I would just keep an eye out for Zay Jones because he is an established veteran, and I think he's at least gives similar size to a player like Marvin Harrison. Um, so they might be able to kind of one for one kind of exchange zay jones in for marvin harrison if he misses any time i mean we'll see some guys bounce right back from concussions and are fine some guys take a little bit more time so keep an eye on the practice reports this week i would expect if he's going to play later on this week maybe wednesday uh partial yeah uh, almost everybody misses a week and sometimes turns into two i mean look what malik neighbors he just fell down on his face mask he's been out two weeks now no doubt about it um and i'm sure they'll take it easy and be very cautious with their first round draft pick. So uh, I would expect him to miss, but just keep an eye on the practice reports just in case if he gets in so- some sort of practice on Wednesday or Thursday, there's at least a shot of him playing on Sunday. Um, moving on to the next injury, not shoulder or hamstring related. Uh, Dontavian Wicks had a shoulder issue. Um, I would say uh, Bo Melton was probably the guy that would take over and kind of get some work in his stead right i mean well, he, christian uh, watson came back this week so he's he, and he he scored a touchdown so i would expect christian watson to kind of slide right into that that role uh you know yeah. Jaden reed coming right back in after his ankle injury uh romeo dubs he scored a touchdown as well so i think christian watson slides in that that, that dontavian wicks role those shoulder sprains are kind of like just like a hamstring you usually miss one week for sure uh with those 90% of the time. So I expect him to miss a week. And I think another bump for Christian Watson to slide into that role. And I think, and that, and that's the kind of game plan you're playing, playing with that green Bay receiving core. Like you feel pretty comfortable with Tucker craft at this point. You absolutely love having Jaden Reed in your lineup on a weekend week out basis as a wide receiver one. So it's like who slides into that number two role on a, on a consistent basis. And we, you know, that was a question mark going into it and whether it be injuries or not, it's still been kind of that roller coaster. Like Romeo Dub scored this week, Christian Watson scored this week. Dontavian Wicks has kind of shown highlights here and there as a very savvy route runner, but like he still hasn't really taken off in that passing game. And I still, I, I would still go back and defer to like I think if they had to pick somebody they really want to put their eggs in their basket, take a big step forward, I think it would be Christian Watson. Uh, you know, not just because he has the highest draft capital, but I think he offers the most, you know, different, different talent than those other receivers right like he's he's a guy that could take the top off of those of that secondary at any moment uh any offers, size and it's like yeah, and, speed. and he offers size and speed which is which you know um yep he's six he's like six four so he, yeah he's pretty big um and obviously you know bo milton will just get some work because they work in everyone and that was only the only reason i kind of mentioned him obviously you're right that um watson and dubs will probably just get more work um but but Bo Melton will at least get some. And you mentioned kind of the sporadic. <laughs> I'm alive. The sporadicness of this offense. You never know. You know, if you're desperate, Bo Melton might be a guy um, 
that is at least worked into this offense and who knows who that who's going to be the guy that gets a touchdown that week so it could be Bo, Bo Melton um here's a, we'll kind of double the, these up because they're both LA um, Chargers and they're both guys that return to action but they both kind of suffered in, injuries that could kind of pop up and linger and kind of you just need to check on so Quint, Quentin Johnston had the ankle injury and left the game and was able to return Lad McConkey had a concussion like symptom or was at least evaluated for concussion and but was able to return for the game so I would say you know obviously just check on their status this week in practices to see if they are in fact practicing if they are no big deal um, move on as if they're healthy if they're missing time you're gonna have to kind of monitor this as the week goes on because ankles are one of those things that once they get the shoe off once they get the tape off they can kind of swell and become worse and obviously concussion like symptoms can kind of pop up afterwards and you can get headaches and all that kind of stuff um if they were to miss time you know uh brendan rice simi fihoko um and darius davis are like the the backup guys there that might see a little bit more work. Well, Josh Palmer would be the one. It, lo- it looked yeah. like Simi Fajoko. He got the he got the he got the most looks afterwards. So you know, outside of Josh Palmer, it looks like it was Simi Fajoko that came in and actually got got a lot of the, mo- the most targets. looks for um mm-hmm. yeah Justin Herbert. Who the Chargers again? They kind of threw the football a little bit more than I thought they would coming off of uh. You know, the injury week for Justin Herbert. We don't know if uh, Jim Harbaugh had diarrhea. It turned out it was actually like a heart kind of thing fluttering, so the butt cheeks were clean. Uh, but, yeah, Simi Fajoko and Josh Palmer would be the guys to kind of take a big step forward here with their, with their absence. Yep. And um, moving on to one last wide receiver injury, we have got Chris Alave had a concussion in uh, this week. It was a pretty um, pretty big hit. I mean, and it, you know, there was a – I don't think it was dirty or anything like that. Dude just got hit right in the head. So um, this yeah, was sure minus 0. 0.5 points. Appreciate you. Yeah, he fumbled on that as well. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was, that was brutal. Um, so this one, you know, his the people behind him, Bub Memes, Mason Tim, uh, Tipton. Sorry, I don't know why I had such a hard time saying that one. Uh, Bub Memes got his first touchdown this past week. He had eight targets and actually tied for the lead with Alvin Kamara in targets with eight. Um, five receptions, 54 yards and a touchdown. So I would expect him to be the guy that kind of steps up. Um, but you yep. never know. They do like uh, Tipton, I think. And he had a couple of targets. Raheed, uh, uh, Shahid had seven targets, only one reception this past week. So, yeah. you know, with Spencer Rattler in there, at quarterback, it might have been one of those things where Rattler and memes were practicing more together and had a better rapport yep. together. So we might see a little bit of a bump. Um, for the next couple of weeks while while Rattler is in with a guy like Memes. Yeah, Memes slid right into that target role. You said they do like tipped in. A.T. Perry was somebody I thought could possibly step up this year and kind of slide into maybe that He's third not even role. on the team. And, yeah. there, and then he kind of disappeared off that uh, off, off the team, so it kind of leaves yeah, no, tipped in, and then Bud Memes he, comes in. And I said Bud Memes took all the targets in the route. Yeah. So um, it, it, it really is like we're still waiting for that other receiver to, I mean, outside, I mean, you have Rashid Shahid, so that makes sense. They'd be signed to him, but like that third receiver to kind of come in and solidify himself for when these injuries occur. Cause they still don't have that guaranteed tight end too. Like, you know, Juwan Johnson, Taysom Hill, Taysom Hill's got all banged up as well. So Bub Means in a really good position here with Spencer Rattler to put up flex play numbers for you over the next week or two. Yeah. I think, I think that's what, how you have to, kind of play that for the next couple of weeks while it's Rattler, it might end up being Bub Memes. So just, um, you know, I don't know if you want to just throw them in there and feel great about it, but if you're, if you're desperate, I would, I would be okay putting in memes uh, for the next couple of weeks. You too. Um, so moving on to the tight end position, we have Hayden Hurst, um, who had a groin injury um, for the chargers. Will Disley came in. And did some okay things, right? He had five targets, four catches, twenty six yards. Nothing spectacular, um, but That's Will, Will Disley, Disley, yeah, Will Disley has shown that if he's given the targets, he's going to make the catches. He's going to make the catches at least. Do yeah. nothing spectacular with him, but he'll move the chain. He's like a volume type of guy. Um, he's Austin Hooper. He is, yeah. I mean, it's it's it is what it is there. Nothing exciting, but you know, if you're a tight end streamer and you had Hurst, I don't know why you would. But if you had Hurst as the guy you were relying on, you could you could confidently go pick up Will Disley and get yeah. the same. Um, to keep you in the cellar. Don't yes. worry. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> that same volume based, uh, b- boring tight end play. 
Will um, Lizley still dropping a basket for lotion for the skin. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no all right, the, from your darkness. The final, the final injury this week was Dallas Goddard, and this was a, a hamstring injury, and obviously, um, he's been semi reliable. So this was a a, a bit of a bummer. <clears throat> but uh, Grant uh, Kel Calcaterra, yeah, yeah, was a guy he's coming that came in doing in a it. very serviceable job. Like he's like. He, you know, he's, he's really taking those seams and, and doing a good job, like attacking the seam and get, mm-hmm. getting some yards after the catch. Done a really he's good always job. been, a, he's always been an interesting guy. And even in college, you know, he had some good production. It was, it was, I believe it was like an injury or like a concussion or something goofy that almost ended his career in college. Um, and he wasn't sure if he was going to be coming back some sort of injury. Um, but he always looks good when he gets an opportunity. So he's, a, he's always a guy that I've kind of had in the back of my mind as a, a deep stash and kind of, wait to see how the Dallas Goddard at the end of his career type of thing um, unwinds. Uh, Cause I like Grant a little bit. So um, not a bad stash. Um, obviously right now he's going to be a hot ad cause he had a nice week for reception, 67 yards. Um, and obviously hamstrings can linger and, and Dallas Goddard it's good for a three to four week absence almost yeah. yearly. So this, this, this is probably this is his... guaranteed two weeks minimum. I would guess even up to three weeks absence from yeah. Dallas Goddard here. Yep. Um, so I would say put in Grant and feel good about it. And um, I think he'll have similar production going forward for the next few weeks while he's the starter. All right. Well, let's start off hot and heavy, Matt. So far going through th- six weeks of the season, we still got Monday night, but this has been one of the healthier years we've actually had uh, in fantasy football. So, it, for- you know, there, it started off hot, like you said, and now it's kind of tapered off and been been pretty pretty chill which is good these are just regular old two to three week boo-boos nothing serious um so let's hope that kind of string continues and we can normalize things and figure out who to get in lineups going forward yeah. i mean this week i think we only have a couple of teams on by i think it's yeah the chicago bears and the dallas cowboys week eight no one on by so that's kind of a really? weird aberration and then yeah and then week nine only a couple teams then then it heats up week 10 and week 11 there's there's five or four each and then Six God, by then, my 12. team would be one and ten, aiming yeah. at the first overall pick in the NFL draft. Can't wait to yeah. see how that goes. Hopefully, somebody needs a quarterback like we do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways, I, I do have the Cleveland baseball team. Uh, shout out to them tonight. Go spank those Jenks. That's what I'm really looking for. It's amazing what good playoff baseball win and a grand slam could really kind of take the sadness out of your football weekend. Cause I was just ecstatic all weekend. I think I watched out lane Thomas grand slam, probably 25, 30 times already. Uh, might get a couple more in today to really perk up the nips, but real excited for that. So, you know, I, in, in a realm of sadness that I lay here in and I wallow in this terrible football play that I thought I was slowly climbing my way out of this quicksand, but that's like quicksand sucks you right back in where the Cleveland football team has just been cursed to suffer all loads of nonsense. And one of my favorite quarterbacks of all time, just so happy to got drafted by my favorite team of all time is just thriving out in Tampa Bay. Even though I know he wouldn't do the same thing here in Cleveland, cause he had to go out and mature it up. It still doesn't hurt my, make my heart feel any better. It's not like, you know, when your wife leaves you, but she married a billionaire and like, well, she's better. She's better off at least, you know, like she's more comfortable in her <laughs> private jet. Uh, and I'm collecting some alimony. It still doesn't make it. Um, that much money because money doesn't buy happiness y'all when oh, super bowls does yes, <laughs> of, course it, of course it does <laughs> but honestly so does world series and that's a, that's my new aim so here's the dodgers losing because i don't want to see shohei tani and that all-star roster uh and then uh here's to the the, the tribe uh spanking those yanks tonight so let, let's go tribe roll tribe roll tribe adios <laughs>